Welcome everyone to this week's episode of Unrooted Men's Basketball Edition. And my guest for this week's show is none other than senior forward on the men's basketball team, Tyler Evans. Tyler, thanks so much for joining me on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Let's start by getting to know you a little bit better. I'm going to start off with a few heavy hitting questions about your hometown. Where is Arnold, California, and what in the heck can you do there? Okay, so uh, first I was actually uh, born in Redwood City. Uh, not a lot of people uh, knew that about me. I didn't. Um, I lived there. I moved up in seventh grade, and um, so I have a little bit of uh, background down here. Okay. But if you ask like other people on the team where Arnold, California is, <laughs> including like Mike, uh, Mikey Eggleton, uh, Kaylin Camaro, even Dan, Daniel Romero, they'll tell you that uh, Arnold is uh, in Mars, and the only <laughs> way to uh, the only way to get there is by a spaceship. So. <laughs> So how do you get there then? You um, drive, I presume. Yeah, you drive. It's uh, um, out. It's uh, three hours from here. It's uh, in uh, Stanislaus National Park. Okay. Um, it's east, uh, eastern California. Um, it's a small town, four, uh, about four thousand people. Um, elevation's about four thousand feet. Um, it's literally the definition of uh, in the middle of nowhere <laughs> i have to travel uh, 30 minutes just to get to my high school oh, every geez. day or 30 miles to get to my high school um but the one cool part about it like um you know who aaron judge is of course yeah the baseball guy yeah. um he was uh in one of the uh, one of the schools in my league really so what school he was in linden linden, went to linden. that's right they're up there uh, they're close. They're they're, about they're halfway. yeah. They're up but, there, I guess. Yeah. But interesting. So, what do you what do you do in Arnold? What is there to do in Arnold? Um, for me, there's a lot to do. I enjoy nature, so mm -hmm. I enjoy like going outside, going for hikes. Um, I'm big into mountain biking. Great mm -hmm. way to stay in shape. Um, and ride around, have some fun. Um, there's some hidden lakes up there. Um, that. A lot of locals know and it's a good spot to go like relax and just hang out with some friends um, surprisingly during the like Christmas time and during other popular holidays a lot of people come up and just like hang around just stay in the like, cabin yeah a lot of tourists <laughs> uh, I never would have guessed that for Arnold California yeah it's a uh, like the area is a uh, it was like during the gold rush it was a popular area during the gold rush um, also another fun fact about um, the county, uh, Calaveras County, is um, Mark Twain, he wrote a book up there, and he, uh, I think the book was named like The Jumping Frog, and another, um, so there's like a tradition now uh, that happens every year mm -hmm. during like uh, May, it's called the Calaveras County Frog Jump Jubilee. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> <laughs> and it's actually a really cool event. It's a uh, we get like a whole week off of school. Um, the first day is you like gather frogs and you uh, jump them and see who jumps the farthest. <laughs> then other days there's like a destruction derby. There's a there's fairs going on. Tell me the destruction derby does not involve the frogs. It does not involve okay. the frogs. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really cool. Like downtown Angels Camp where my high school was, you mm -hmm. could uh, walk down and just like Hollywood where you see like stars, you see. Uh, like stars of what looks like names, but they're the, really the names of the frogs that end up winning the contest. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, well, I guess instead of being like the stars, they'd be like lilies. Um, or wouldn't that make kind that, of sense? That would make more sense, <clears throat> but um, they're actually just like little stars. Oh my goodness it's gracious. Funny. I can't believe that this is a real thing. Yeah. When do they hold this? Um, it's in May, I believe. I'm not sure the exact date. Perfect. I'm off like in May. Guess where I'm going to be going in May? I'm going to be going to the Frog Leap in Arnold, California. Um, let's go back to writing a little bit. I follow you on social media because we came into Menlo at the same time. And um, you are big into, you know, mountain biking, dirt bikes, ATVs, your sister as well. How did this begin for you guys? Uh, so actually it happened before I was born. My dad used to uh, race dirt bikes down uh, here in the Bay Area. Um, then when I was five years old, I got my first dirt bike. Um, my dad, I got to a point where I was getting good. Um, so my dad decided to bring my, uh, my whole entire family to come watch me. And the very first time they saw me watch, uh, they saw me ride. I was going up this grass hill. Uh, I was turning, um, 
It went a little too fast. The next thing I know, I ran to the bumper of my dad's truck. <laughs> and I think That's that not was, funny, but I'm laughing. <laughs> yeah, I, I was laughing. I'm just laughing after it. But uh, uh, that was, I think that was the last time they ever seen me ride <laughs> when I was five. <laughs> but uh, like now, I haven't really been into like too much of riding. The only time I go is like when my family uh, go decides to go out. Like I pretty much uh, there's like trails in my backyard. I just tra- travel like 10 uh, minutes. And like my sister and I and my dad would just go ride. Mm-hmm. Uh, just some like family uh, bonding time. Yeah. A little bit of fun. Um, yeah. That's a cool way and a unique way to do it for sure. I would. It have, is. I mean, yeah. but again, when you're up in Arnold, California, yeah. and you mostly only have the frog leap, what else are you going to do? <laughs> exactly. Go out on the bikes and ride a little bit. Yep. That's fun. Now, no oak since 1986 has a better free throw shooting percentage than this guy, Tyler Evans. You've missed only 10 free throws in four years here as an Oak. That is incredible. Does that just come natural for you? Um, I would say now it comes a little bit natural. Just I had a lot of practice. Um, my senior year in high school, I shot about 75% from the free throw line, and I wanted to uh, improve that. And so I shot during the summer, I shot 100 uh, free throws every single day. Then uh, it got to a point like after like my AAU game or AAU practices, I would shoot, uh, I would make 20 more uh, free throws and got to the point where I do like the same rhythm every single time. Mm-hmm. And that's like what I learned, like in games, like you go out or in practice, you go out and shoot a hundred shots, but that doesn't mean like in games, you're gonna shoot better. Like if you go out and practice um, like slow and not how you do in games, then the games is gonna be harder uh, to do. So on free throws, I'm like the slowest free throw shooter on the team. <laughs> Um, I finished last every uh, free throw drill time wise, but so I go through my whole entire rhythm every single time. I don't do any shortcuts. Um, I try to keep it the same every single time and try to give me the best chance to make a uh, free throw each time. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if you're finishing last in the drill yeah. because you're probably making more than anybody else too. So yeah, you can go ahead correct. and brag on that. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's talk a little bit about the team now, Tyler. There was only one game on the schedule last week. It was against William Jessup and it was a crazy back and forth contest. I want to start with the first half. Jared Wall exploded for 18 yeah. points in the first half alone. And he's been scoring a lot more here in the past couple of weeks. What's been the key to his recent success? Um, so this all starts in practice. Like in practice, um, he's making a lot of shots. I want to say one practice he made eight three-pointers in a row. <laughs> um, but also it's uh, defensive, uh, on the defensive end. Like he's like the one guy who consistently will go out, try to take charges, um, dive on the floor. Um, I'm not sure if you remember last year, but he jumped over the uh, the... the scores table yeah I do remember that very well (laughs) and uh yeah but he uh like I want to say like just like everyone on our team we play Mm -hmm. better uh offensively starting on the defensive end and I want to say that's the same with uh, Jared Wall he uh he goes out there and busts his butt every single day defensively and just uh we talked a lot about like uh toughness and how it's not like how uh tough like tough uh you're acting like mm-hmm. how um but it's like more of like mental like diving on the floor getting loose balls taking charges yeah. and he's doing a great job of that and that i think um has led to uh, his success on the offensive end now the second half of the game different story william jessup erased a 15 point lead that the oaks had at halftime it took him only nine minutes it might be tough to analyze, but I'm sure you guys have gone through it at practice. What happened that kind of flipped the script towards Jessup pulling ahead? So William Jessup is a good team, just like every or William Jessup is a good team, just like every other uh, team in this conference. I yeah. believe everyone other than San Diego Christian has been like at least been receiving votes. Yeah, the, the conference is loaded. Yeah, so like everyone has the ability to beat anyone on a given day. Even San Diego Christian beat uh, Vanguard. I believe last week Mm -hmm. and um, yeah but uh, during halftime we uh, emphasize getting kills um, which uh, we call like getting three stops in a row Uh, we got three in the first half which limited them to only 38 points 33 points it was 38 and you guys had like 53 yeah it was it was a big discrepancy and uh, William Jessup is a team that definitely runs off of energy mm-hmm. like uh and they scored i want to say they went on 10-0 run to start the second half mm-hmm. then 
that gave them all the energy we needed. Um, they're a great team, and we gave up. We ended up giving up 47 points in the second half, and even scoring 53 in the first half. That is not like a good recipe for winning. Um, we didn't get any of the kills uh, in the second half. We ended up with three in the first, but they came out offense. Uh, really powerful on offense, mm -hmm. and we struggled uh, to get stops, getting defensive rebounds, and it made for them uh, going on lar lar uh, larger and uh, tougher runs. Yeah, and then what helped you guys erase a double-digit point deficit of your own in the second half was the play of the bench. They really stepped up a lot of bench points in the second half. Actually, only a few points came from the starters in the second half. Is that going to be a key for you guys moving forward, getting the entire team involved in scoring as opposed to just relying on a few starters? Yeah, our uh, game plan is five guys working together to create the best percentage shot. So we don't really um, have like a, the number one like dominant score. Like each time down the court, we're gonna try to work our way, try to get the, uh, the best uh, shot, whether if it's the five starters or five people coming off the bench. Um, everyone's gonna be working together um, but it's important um, each game, like the first uh, five minutes for like the starting five to go out and like set the tone of the game. And I think that's the dip that determines how the bench is going to be doing. Like uh, if the, like the first half um, of the game, uh, the starting five went out, gave great minutes, and mm -hmm. uh, we ended up leading by like 15 at the first half because everyone was happy, everyone was having fun. That was probably like the best half of basketball we played since like our winning streak at the beginning of the year. But like coming off like a slow start, it's tough. Like it, we look to the bench to get uh, some key minutes and like looking down the road, um, we're gonna need the bench to play some big minutes um, later in the game as well as the starters and just hopefully um, we can work together and just um, making sure we play hard and uh, staying on top of things. Yeah, as a veteran member of this team, is it kind of cool to look at the young core that the Oaks are developing and think this team's going to be pretty good in even maybe just a year or two down the road? Yeah, it's amazing. Like seeing like the freshmen like Najai and uh, Charles come in and like they were they seemed a little nervous at the beginning of the year, but like now um, we spent so much time with them like on and off the court. It seemed to like trust everyone and it seemed they've been playing well, especially with the younger guys like uh, Jeremiah Testa, Jared Wall. Um, they're playing with. They're playing great with them. Um, yeah, being a senior, a fifth year senior, it. Uh, I've definitely seen like a lot of uh, different teams, mm -hmm. a lot of different people, but like seeing these people come together and play with each other, is going to be uh, really tough for other teams to beat in a couple years or even next year. Yeah, it should be fun to watch for sure. Now you guys go back on the road uh, this weekend. You have San Diego Christian and Arizona Christian. Even though you technically haven't won a game in 2018, since you haven't won since December, what's the mindset of this team going back onto the road? So like I mentioned earlier, every team has the ability to beat every team. Mm -hmm. Everyone has, except for San Diego Christian, has received votes. But uh, this week we're treating uh, San Diego, we're, we're just looking at San Diego Christian first. We're not wor right now we're not worried about Arizona Christian until after the San Diego Christian game. But we're treating this um, like as a must win game. Uh, we're as of right now last place in the conference and these two teams are uh, one game above us. So yeah. right now all of our attention is focused on San Diego Christian and uh, hopefully uh, beating them on their home court. Yeah, good attitude to have for it. All right, Tyler, let's get into the final segment of the show. It's called Brownie Bites. I'm going to ask you three random off-the-wall questions. You give me your best answers. Okay. Question number one, which teammate <laughs> hates the outdoors the most? Oh, that has to be uh, Henry Cornelius. You um, said that without skipping a beat. Yeah, we uh, on our road trip up to Humboldt State, um, we took a little detour and went to, uh, I believe, the Humboldt State National Park. Mm -hmm. And we toured... Um, like the trails and saw the trees and then the, all the nature. And like, it felt like every uh, 20 seconds he was just complaining. Like, <laughs> like, how do people live here? What is there to do? Hopefully there's not a bear coming. <laughs> I'm not getting any cell phone reception. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right, so he does not want to go visit you in Arnold, uh, California. No, he does That's not. for sure. <laughs> uh, number two, which teammate would be most likely to perform a successful stunt while riding an ATV? 
I actually have two people for this. The first person I just really want to see <laughs> on an ATV, it would be Eric Fredlin. <laughs> just because <laughs> uh, I'm pretty tall for an ATV. Yeah. And uh, I would love to see how long Eric uh, looks on one. <laughs> I've seen him on a mechanical bull and that he... It just looked awkward. You made it what looked like a mechanical dog, probably. Yeah, it yeah. did. <laughs> like his feet were on the ground. It was it was really weird. Okay. And uh, I also don't think Eric could really could perform a stunt. You just want to see that. Yeah. Well, I would love to, but I've seen his uh, vertical in practice, and there's definitely days where he can't really slide a credit card under. <laughs> um, so, but the other person I would have to say, I honestly don't see like anyone riding an ATV, but if I had to pick one person, it would be Jared Wall. Just like he, how he, how you like see him like dive like five feet on mm -hmm. the court, um, just flying everywhere. I, he would definitely be my choice. Yeah, I mean, he could, he could, he could kind of do that like Superman dive, hold yeah. onto the handlebars, you know, kick the legs out behind <laughs> him and then bring it all back together. I could yeah. see, I could see him <laughs> pulling that off. Don't do it during the season, Jim, yeah. please. Or don't even do it at all for that matter. You cannot get hurt. Uh, and then question number three, aside from Thunder and Lightning, which I'm starting to hear about more and more on this show, which teammate has the best nickname? Well, this is tough. Um, everyone on the team has a nickname in some way. Okay. Um, but like one nickname I really love, I don't know if you heard of this, is a, a C4, that's a Charles, like a little uh, dynamite. Okay. Um, but other than uh, Charles, I would have to say uh, Jeremiah Testa, a JT. Everyone, Classic. everyone thinks his nickname is JT because it's short for Jeremiah Testa. Oh, but, but it's not. Uh, but it's not. Oh, okay. Um, is are you a fan of Semi Pro? No, I don't even know what that is. Oh, okay. Then uh, there's a there's a scene in there, and uh, like uh, we call or the JT is short for Jive Turkey. Jive Turkey? Yeah, Jive yeah. Turkey. It's uh, you kind of have to see the movie, <laughs> but <laughs> so that okay. So really, he's JT because not because of his name, but because of Jive Turkey. Yes, that's correct. Okay. If you uh, watch the movie, a better you get a better understanding. What's of the it. movie about? It's uh like a basketball team. It has Will Ferrell in it. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, they're uh, like a they're in the ABA. They're not the great team. They get a a basketball player who they trade him for a washing machine and he uh, helps lead their team and the, their goal is to make fourth place to get into the NBA. Uh, they eventually get uh, fourth place but it turned out they didn't make the the league with other reasons. Because they had but, a washing machine on their team? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that apparently. probably is yeah. part of the reason why I would assume. <laughs> Well, Tyler, thank you so much for joining me on the show. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. No problem, folks. Men's basketball, they're on the road this weekend, Thursday, which is, of course, before this episode will air there in San Diego Christian. Then the game this weekend, Saturday, the 27th of July. They tip off in Phoenix at 4 o'clock p.m. against the firestorm that is Arizona Christian. They will then return home the following weekend to take on Westmont and the Masters inside Haynes Prim Pavilion. So that will be your next chance to come out and see the Oaks live in person. We invite you to tune into next week's show when Tyler Evans will select the next interviewee right here on Unrooted Men's Basketball Edition with myself, Brian Brownfield. Until then, we'll see you next week. Take care, everybody.